This time on Rad Rat Video, we're talking about stance and if skaters without a stance are gonna get to be more common, because there are some already. Maybe, let's talk about it. Welcome back to Rad Rat Video, a channel where you can learn new things about skateboarding, where I review old skateboarding games and new ones and do anything that I can figure out that has skateboarding in it, like answering your questions. Uh, you can submit your question by going to radratvideo.com and you can be in the next video. Not the next one, I'm recording a few today, but this first question is from Richard T who asks, I grew up skating, had the best years of my youth fully immersed in the skateboard scene. I'm now 10 years removed from skating at 30 years old, but still watch content like new video parts and rad rat content all the time. The other day, I finally busted out my board and skated down the neighborhood, popping kickflips, a couple trays, surprisingly, mostly just cruise for fun. However, I never felt so out of place as a grown adult on a skateboard. I felt like I looked so goofy and never see guys my age and build skating. Got a few weird looks from passersby. Am I just too old to be skateboarding? How can I skate more often without the stigma of an old guy on a board? I don't know where you're from, but in my town, I'm 32. If I go to the skate park, I feel like I'm young there. I don't know if it's the times I pick or, or whatever, but it's almost always adults. Sometimes they've got kids with them. So like, yeah, you've got little kids, but as far as like, you know, it's guys who are at least in their, their mid twenties. Like, you know, I don't, I don't know how old it, everybody is but you know grown adults for the most part um, a lot of them i've talked to i've talked to skaters there who are like, oh yeah i used to skate way back in the day now that they built the skate park and i'm in my 40s and my kids are you know i don't need to be around as much because they're doing homework and blah 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 i'll come down to the skate park and i'll do some stuff super common to see people who are who are older skating around me so i don't know where you're from where that's the case but I would not worry about it at all. I Well, I would. I wouldn't recommend worrying about it. It's something that I would uh, worry about because uh, I, yeah, anxiety and stuff. But this was a conversation I was having with a friend recently where this friend has a very strange hobby. I'm not going to talk about what it is. Uh, and the best place to do this hobby is on the front porch with people walking by. And you get some some weird looks. And like the conclusion I came to when talking about this was lean into your weird. I think that was the phrase I came up with, which is like, you like it, so do it. Who cares? You know, and it's something I'm still working on. But I was talking about how I have trouble decorating my house in a certain way. You know, like if you were to come in the front door of my house, I've got art hanging on the walls. I've got a bookshelf with some books on it. Uh, and I've got a bookshelf with some some games on it and like it's all very neutral you're not gonna walk in and think like oh this is the guy who has whatever there aren't skateboards hanging up everywhere there's not a life-size spider-man in the corner there's not there's nothing weird going on in the house but maybe there should be you know maybe I should just do what I want to do for the sake of my own enjoyment like how often do I have new people over and if I do have a new person over and they judge the things I have, then I shouldn't be friends with them anyway, you know? So like the fact that I would live in a way to prepare for the judgment of people who may never even see it is, it's not right. This is, again, this is why I said I would have a problem, but I don't recommend it. Like, yeah, you should do whatever you want to do. There was a, a, a book I read one time. It was about um, how to save money and stuff like that. And, and the, the, the benefits of buying a starter house and then just living in it until you die. And the, the, one of the things was there was a guy who plays one of those big horns. It's uh, like you're standing up and it's all the way down uh, to the ground. You play on like a mountainside or whatever. This was this guy's hobby. He loved to play that. Um, and so he built a special room in his house. It's like a really narrow and long room because that's the right acoustics for it or, or whatever the case is. And no one's going to want that room. The house is going to be hard to sell, but who cares? He's going to keep it. He's going to do what he wants to do. He doesn't have to worry about what other people are going to think when he sells it. He's going to worry about what he wants. And so if you want to skate around and you're 30, I mean, come on, dude, like it's not a problem. If everyone in your city who skates is like 15, so what? You'll be the cool old guy who skates. I dropped a light back here, but um, yeah, like who cares? You should lean into your weird, do whatever you enjoy and not worry about it.
The next question is from Joe T who says, Hey bud, I started skating at 50 three years ago and would be interested to hear your comment on reasonable expectations for older skaters. I know there's a ton of, of variables you can't address, but just your thoughts on the matter in a general sense. For context, I still can't ollie over a broom handle. I have landed a few shovets, play around with some nose stalls. Can uh, I can r roll around to park okay, pumping through transitions, etc. Thanks. Um, I wouldn't have any expectations. Uh, this is something that comes up from time to time. Like, how do I make sure I'm progressing the right way? Should I learn these tricks or should I skip them so I can get to this other stuff quicker and I can learn these tricks before? I don't think it matters. You know, there is a there's a guy. What's his name? His Instagram is Gasp Skate, I think. He's 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 an older guy. He's a dentist and is I think he's in his fifties as well. He started skateboarding. And he started doing all this handstand stuff, and he's done types of handstand uh, combos and stuff that no one has ever done before um, as an older guy. And like, that's great. That's amazing that he can do all that. But if he also started skateboarding in his fifties and just learned how to do a shove it and just like to push around like that's fine too it it doesn't matter i don't i i wouldn't have any specific expectations like for me my skill level has pretty much stayed flat for like 20 years <laughs> it it just it has um i may be gotten a little bit better at certain things because of just as you get older your body like the f body feel of like knowing where your body is positioned in the air and all that you just get more comfortable when you're a teenager and your body is growing and everything you don't really know like it's a little you trust it a little bit less but now i i understand where i am in space a little bit better so certain things are easier but like certain stuff is harder too and whatever who cares i think that's fine um i would prefer to have been getting better and better and better this whole time and now i'm amazing but it didn't work out like that in your case, maybe you will learn tons of tricks and you'll be able to do 360 flips and you'll get all this type of stuff within the next year. Maybe you won't, um, but it doesn't matter. So like you could be like the gasp skate. I'm, I'll, I'll put his name on screen. You might be like him and you'll be able to do all kinds of crazy, unique stuff within a couple of years. Or maybe you'll be the guy, you'll finally learn how to ollie over that broom handle and you'll decide that's the level you're at. And that's going to be it. Um, both ways are fine. I, I, don't, I wouldn't worry about your expectations. I wouldn't worry about what you should be able to do at, at a certain point. Like that's not, you're not trying to go pro. So it, you don't have a certain, like certain standards you have to meet at certain points. There's no like tests you got to take to make sure you qualify for the certification. Like you're just, you're riding around on a board. You're making a do a flippy do or not and you're just rolling on different things. That's all it is. You don't have to you don't have to put any pressure on it. Okay. Next question is from Guy who says, "I just learned 360 shove it under flip lately. Some of my friends say it's just a 360 flip. Do you think it's pointless to call it a different name if the board is doing the same thing?" Um, in this case, I do. So I, I have footage of me doing one of these before. I'll, I'll show you the trick he's talking about if you're not uh, not familiar with it. So it, it flips the exact same way as a 360 flip. Backside 360 flips like a kickflip because it you know you're hooking your toe under it as it starts to spin. It looks a lot like a 360 flip. If you were really sneaky about it, you could probably do one in a game of skate and they might not notice. You know, if you put your front foot in a really kick flippy type of position and stuff, you might be able to, to get away with it. I'd say it's different though. Just since I can do both of them, I can I could say that it, it feels quite a bit different. And I think there is some value to uh, having really specific names. Not necessarily comparing, but now that you're thinking of that as being its own thing, that might make you think of something else. What if I did a heel, uh, heel under flip? Or what if I did a shove it double under flip? You're not thinking of what's a weird way to do a varial flip. You're thinking of it as a separate thing. Well, if I do the pop shove it, I wait, and then I do it the straight flip afterward. You know, I think that's why it's important to have differentiation so that you can sort of easier brainstorming and stuff like that. Um, but <laughs> that said, if you do the opposite, so like a front side 360 shove it, catch it with your heel um, and it'll flip around exactly like a laser flip would um, 
I actually made a whole video about this topic right here a long time ago, but Chris Haslam, a lot of big name pros, they cheat by using their heel to kind of do an underflip on the side of the board, but it's so common that it's basically just the same thing in that case. You can do one or the other and like no one's going to notice the difference. I, I even think in, in skate, whoever they got to do the, the, uh, the motion capture for it, if you watch a laser flip in skate, I'm pretty sure he, he cheats at it too. So like cheat in, in quotes, I don't think there's anything wrong with doing it that way. But um, yeah, so in that case, I would say it's the same thing. But um, that's just because they've gotten so blurred together at this point. Okay. Next question is from Matt. I noticed that you have grip tape on your nose and tail. Does that help significantly for Casper stalls? Is it useful for anything else? I also noticed the way you can go from standing with your nose up and foot on the tail to somehow shift into a rail stand pretty smoothly. How long did it take to get comfortable doing that? And does that have a trick name? Okay. So the trick you're referring to is called a tail to rail. So what you do, um, you stand on the board with both your feet facing forward, put some pressure on this corner, the board will start to tip. And as you do, you hook this foot over and you transition to standing up on, on the wheel. And that is by far the easiest way to get onto the, the, the rail. What a lot of street skaters will do if you tell them, hey, do a primo, um, which it's only called it if you're sliding, by the way, it's like an axle stall versus a 50-50 grind. But if you were to tell them to do that, what they would almost always do is stand on the bolts, push the toes down and jump up. That's harder. That's one of the harder ways to do it because you have to jump up and land on it my way you never lose contact with the board so as the board's starting to tip over your foot's on the wheel before it even comes down and before your front foot is on it you're already solidly locked into it so it's a very simple very very easy very consistent way to do it it may be a little bit weird to to learn it and to get used to the feeling and how you shift your weight and stuff like that but once you get the hang of it, it is the easiest way to get in it to, into it by far. When I'm doing my stuff for the tricks and, and tribulations videos, I'm not trying to impress you with how I get into rail. I'm trying to just do it legitimately so that the landing trick counts, you know, instead of just like, you know, putting the board on the side with my hands and then stepping onto it. I wouldn't count the trick if I did that. So anyway, yeah, it's very easy. There's a lot of different things in freestyle that uh, people on street do the hard way without realizing that it's harder. So if you were to do, you know, like flip the board with your hand um, to do some kind of a, a, of a finger flip, what a lot of street skaters will do, I'll be goofy for the sake of the camera here, um, they'll, they'll grab it right here and they'll do a, a kick flip because I think a lot of street skaters, kick flips are easier than heel flips. So their first thought is the easy way to do a finger flip is to do a kickflip style. It's not, the easy way to do it is to do it like this. Have your thumb push down while your fingers pull up. And if you're really brave, you can do it with your hand backwards and you can flip it like a heel flip a lot harder. <laughs> like that's the easier way, but a lot of street skaters don't know that. And so they just kind of come up with a version that's harder and to a freestyler looks kind of weird. But yeah, I do have grip tape on the nose and tail. That is for Caspers. It's also a skid plate because you're not really popping ollies that much. Um, so you might as well have, might as well protect the board. But also that helps you lock into a Casper too because there's that little lip there for your shoe to be on. Doing a legitimate Casper where neither foot touches the ground at all uh, on a street board is really hard because the, the tail is steeper, you land on it. I was trying a Casper to Casper on a normal street board and I could land on the tail and my foot would slide down and hit the ground. Your back foot's not supposed to touch the ground, your front foot either. Um, nothing is supposed to touch the ground in, in a Casper. So like doing it that way on a street board is pretty much impossible to do a legitimate Casper. So yeah, so like having grip tape and the skid plate and stuff, that's good for a freestyle setup. I, my street board obviously doesn't have any of that. Okay. Next question is from T Core YT, who says, uh, Leandre Sanders is dual stance. Will there be more skaters with the dual stance style or is he just an anomaly? Skates goofy on vert and regular street. So if you haven't seen him, look him up on the, on the barracks. There's a, a video of him talking about it. So he used to, he would skate street. He learned a bunch of tricks. Everything was fine. Went to a skate park and tried to skate down the uh, snake run. 
and he just couldn't do it. He couldn't get like the pumping didn't feel right or, or, or whatever. So he tried to switch and it was easy. And he realized that he skates goofy on transition and he still does now. And now he's really good, does all kinds of stuff. He does like a 540 over a hip at the barracks, like the, their quarter pipe hip thing. He does a 540 over that and like all kinds of stuff that he can do on transition. And he does it all goofy but all of his street stuff he does normal. So like he doesn't say regular and switch, he says goofy and, and regular. Like, you know, he doesn't call one switch because he can do stuff in both stances. And I think most people have that to some degree, you know, like a lot of people find switch heel flips easier or, you know, there's certain tricks because of the way that your weight wants to be or something. And uh, for me, I think hospital flips are the only thing that's easier for me switch. I can do pretty much everything easier in my normal stance, but it did make me think about, you know, what exactly gives you a stance? Like, what is that? We've done polls on this channel and I've seen them from different places. I did a whole video on Goofy. Where does the name come from? And like, what, why is it considered Goofy? Is it weird? Is it less common? It's really not. It was like, 45, 55 split of uh, goofy and, and regular, I think. But um, you know, like, where does it come from? It's not linked to what handedness you are. If you're left handed, you're not more likely to be goofy. Um, like what foot do you kick with? Doesn't seem to be related to it at all. You know, when you skate, you do use both feet, you know, to do a 360 flip. Maybe your front foot's doing a little bit more, but like, you know, you're still, you have to use both feet. So like what makes you pick a certain stance? Um, I remember back in the day when I was on the skate forums and stuff, when I was first getting started, the suggestion that they would give you is put your board down like this on, on the ground, you face it, run up to it and jump on it. And like, don't figure out which way you're going to land on it, but your body will just kind of naturally turn. You, you're not going to land on it straight. You're going to land one way or the other. One way is going to feel more normal than the other one. But like, this is a, this is a lifelong choice for your stance that you're making with no skateboarding knowledge at all. Cause you're, it's like day one, right? Maybe you got to this forum and you got that tip, but I mean, how, how valuable is that tip? You're learning, you're deciding what stance you're going to skate in for the rest of your life, just kind of randomly. And I feel like a lot of people picked their stance based on what was popular or who was popular at the time. So um, I did a video on how the skate series is actually goofy stance propaganda, which is mostly tongue in cheek. But like in that game, a lot of the pro skaters are goofy. Your character that you make starts off defaults to goofy um, in some types of challenges like the, the skate. Like when you play skate against somebody else, you switch stances to be goofy instead of them switching to match you. Um, so like, I wonder how many people started skating after playing those games and they picked goofy because of all that stuff, right? So are they really goofy? What does it mean to really be goofy? Is this even a real thing? And I'm starting to think that it's not. Uh, a few years ago, uh, uh, Rodney Mullen did a, a video where he's talking about like deconstructing stance and getting rid of it in himself. And I remember when this video came out, a lot of people were a little bit concerned for his mental health because it's, it seems a little weird, all the stuff that he's talking about and to just get rid of the notion of stances and everything. But I kind of feel like he's, he's right. You know, like maybe the guy we're talking about, uh, uh, the Andre, he skates transition better goofy. So he feels more comfortable riding Goofy, but he learned all of his tricks regular. If he had picked Goofy in the first place, would he have been better at tricks and better at riding in the same in the same way? Like, did he pick the wrong stance and that's why he's somewhere in the middle? Or is it just, is it not related to anything like that? And I, I just don't know. I, I, there have been people like him in the past that I've heard of. I went to school with a guy who would skate around goofy, but do his tricks the other way and do all his tricks switch. And he would, he would get really confusing when he tried to name what the trick was that he did, because it was always like, he would say whichever one sounded harder, you know, but anyway. Um, so yeah, like, was it fakey if you're in your normal 
because you you normally skate goofy, so you're doing something off the nose. Is that is that nolly or is it faky? Confusing. But uh, yeah, I think that if we didn't tell the next generation that there were stances, <laughs> you know, um, like we just played a prank or did an experiment on the next generation of skaters, we never mentioned stances before. And you just said it like like they did in the in, in, in that barracks video, like do it regular now, do it goofy. Would they feel that this trick was always consistently harder in this stance or would it be more complicated than that? I think it's more complicated and we just don't know exactly why. So that's not a great answer, but yeah, I think that I think that is more common than you think. And I think the idea that this is switch and therefore it's harder uh, is too hard to shake. You know, like for me, I almost never skate switch at all. If I went out and I realized that this particular trick, let's say something really hard uh, was easier for me switch, I don't think my brain would accept that. I don't think it would allow me to be good at a switch tray flip, but you know, in a way where it's easier than a regular one. I don't think my brain would allow for that. And um, so we've we've talked about how the level of skateboarding has progressed so much. Street skaters in the 80s, if you could board slide a four set, you were pro, you know, compared to now, a lot of that had to do with not knowing what was possible, right? It's all mental blocks. You don't realize that it's perfectly possible to do a feeble down 20 stairs and it's no big deal. Um, so in the 80s, you had to slowly build up. Um, I think that mental block is is there for people with switch. Switch is really hard, therefore everything I try in it has to be hard, you know? Maybe I'm crazy, maybe not. Like I said, I don't skate switch much, so like um, I'm not really the expert on, on all that stuff, but yeah, I think stance is a lot more complicated than we think it is, but what are you gonna do about it? So that's it for now. If you got another question for the channel, go to radratvideo.com and submit it on the homepage. You can also buy a shirt while you're there. You can go to Patreon and sponsor me there and you can send in your question, which I will definitely answer either directly or on the air, depending on the question. And that's it for now. Thanks for watching.